Microphone's on. Cracking. I'd like to call this Tuesday, February 18th, 2020, meeting to order of the Oldsmar City Council. The first two items on the agenda is our advocate invocation and our pledge of allegiance, who will be led by, which will be led by standing in for our city attorney, uh, Patrick Perez. So please rise. Heavenly Father, send down your blessing on this meeting of the city council. Give the council members a clear sense of duty and lead them to a faithful discharge of the same. Direct them in their deliberations at this meeting so that all things may be done in the name and the welfare of the people of the city of Oldsmar. This we pray, amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, please have your seats. I want to recognize special guest. I'm sure he's here in his new role, but uh, former Mayor Beavis is in the audience with us. Where's he at? Right over there. Sitting on the side. Welcome, sir. Always a pleasure to have you. I think with your new role, I'm going to be introducing you at every meeting. We, we need to figure this out, but it's just a sign of respect we like to do around here. Before we get into the uh, Citizens Open Forum, I would like to recognize uh, our local commander of the VFW, Commander Bear, because he has some special guests with him. Commander? And if, if you could come to the microphone so it's recorded. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we have the District 21 commander with us, Gene Dale. 21 adjutant, Ernie Philippi. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, welcome, gentlemen. I know you're here to see uh, one of your own uh, join one of our boards tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and move into the Citizens Open Forum. The only rules that we have is that you can't speak to any item that's on the uh, agenda as a public hearing, which would be item number seven. We'd ask that you hold your comments for that until that time. Uh, you know, it's funny, when I start speaking fast, I see Chris Bohr out here, and I just immediately think of the auctioneer starts coming out in me. Uh, we also ask that you not speak longer than five minutes, and when you come up, you state your name and address and make sure you include your city. We don't assume that you're from here. I'm going to start on this side of the room. Is there anybody who has anything for the Citizens Open Forum? Saying that, I want to move to the right side. Is there anybody on this side? Going once, going, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Commander Bear. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, David Bear, I'm from Port Ritchie, Florida, 8247 Hickston Drive. Um, I just wanted to let you know that we got the official word that the auxiliary charter has been approved by National. Excellent. Which is the <laughs> next step for your VFW. So, thank you. Excellent. Well, I know you all have been working hard on that, so we're, we're both excited and we appreciate your hard work. Is there anybody else on this side of the room? Seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and close the Citizens Open Forum and move into the Community Minute, which will be announced by our City Clerk, Ann Nixon. Touch it. The Touch a Truck is at Ultimate Fire Rescue. They're hosting a Touch a Truck event on Saturday, February 22nd from 10 to 2. Vehicles from the Florida Forest Service, Sheriff's Office SWAT, and K-9 divisions. Rescue vehicles and Public Works Fleet will be on site. There'll be an extrication demo, figure printing for kids, fire hose practice, not on the kids, but fire hose practice. <laughs> <laughs> fire and photos of Smokey the Bear, only you can prevent forest fires, will provide plenty of excitement at this family-friendly event at the fire station. It's February 22nd from 10 to 2. Sunset Sounds is here for the spring. Free outdoor concert under the stars on Friday, February 28th, 6.30 to 9 at Ariel's Park. Music begins at 7 with Backwater Blues Band, featuring classic rock and blues. Food trucks will be available for concessions. Bring your blankets and lawn chairs, and golf carts are welcome, too. So that's February 28th, 6.30 to 9, Ariel's Park. Music starts at 7 o'clock sharp. And Women's Ball Hockey Clinic, this is exciting, join <laughs> staff and coaches on Friday, March 6th. Friday, March 6th, 6 to 9 o'clock at the street hockey rink located at the Oldsmar Sports Complex. Clinics and scrimmages will be held during this free event, ages 16 and over. All skills welcome. Join staff and coaches Friday, March 6th, 6 to 9. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's an ultimate high-intensity impact interval training. Street hit, hockey. So hit training. Come on out. Hit training. Now, is that, you is that get on it. skates? We'll show you the new walker technique for making a goal. Is that on skates <laughs> or tennis shoes? Tennis shoes. Tennis shoes. Okay. Very good. And what day is that? That's March 6th. <laughs> okay. I didn't hear that earlier. All right. Thank you. 
Hey, on the uh, toucher truck, are we going to have the new uh, 45R or 54R over there? I would assume. We had the privilege earlier to, there's a tradition when you get a new rescue vehicle that they literally push it into service. So they push it in the bay. So we were over there earlier and we all got to push it into the bay and Housing, yeah. The housing. The housing, the housing ceremony. Not the, that's yes. it. Okay, the housing. Chief explained it harkens back to when they literally had to push the fire rescue apparatus. The wagon on, in on, when it was drawn by, by horses. horses. Yeah, back that's into right. the bay. Really cool. And as much as we spent on the truck, I hope it's the only time we have to push Ooh. it into the house. That's Indeed. for sure. All right, next item on the agenda. Uh, approval of additional new agenda items. The only new items that we have are item 9 and item 10. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Sensing you're ready to vote, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Next item on the agenda, awards and recognition. Item number one, presentation of the council manager award for February 2020, which will be presented by council member Grimes. You can give her some applause. Yay. Come on. work. Hello. There you go. Robin and Mark, would you please join me? I'm proud to announce that this month's council member award is going to Microlumen Incorporated. We have Robin Reynolds and Mark Roberts here tonight with us, correct? Correct. Okay. I always want to make sure I pronounce that correctly. Um, Microlumen has been in um, Old Smar for quite some time. They um, are a high performance medical tubing products manufacturer. Currently, they have close to 200 employees. Tonight, I want to shine a spotlight on not them as a business, but their philanthropic actions that they do in our community. Microlumen strives each year to donate 1% of their sales to various charities. Microlumen focuses on improving lives through their support of large outreach organizations, such as, and the list. <laughs> Make-A-Wish, they sponsor their annual golf tournament, Lightning Foundation Make-A-Wish Nights at the Tampa Bay Lightning Games, and Brandon Day is a board member. Children's Cancer Center, their annual donors, and do volunteer work there as well. Tampa General Hospital, they sponsor the golf tournament, and Brandon Day is a board member. Quantum Leap Farms, their annual donors, and they sponsor parts of the golf tournament. Jan Stevenson Crossroads Foundation. This year, they donated to help rehabilitate the bunkers at the golf course so that vets that have physical limitations are able to access it. So that was pretty cool. Um, they are also one of their presenting sponsors this year for their golf tournament. Oldsmar Cares, their annual donors and have employees who volunteer on a regular basis. The Tampa YMCA. <laughs> yes, Robin, very much so. Their annual donors, and Robin Reynolds is on their governance board. Pace Center for Girls, their annual donors. Metropolitan Ministries, they're a bridge builder supporter, and they have employees who volunteer. Relay for Life, they have a local team and their silver sponsors. Suncoast Hospice, they're sponsors of the annual Hospice Ball. On Bikes, they're annual sponsors of their Winter Wonder Ride, and they have a team for the Build a Bike. Mark and Brandon are also copperheads and, and support the Birdies for the Blind Challenge at the tournament, which um, helps give money back to blind vets. Microlumen also matches all of their employees' charitable donations throughout the year. They also um, participate in employee drives such as Old Smart Care Pop Drops and Toys for Tots. And last but not least, they also support the city. They are an annual golf tournament sponsor. They help with Celebrate Oldsmar, and they're members of the Historical Society. It is my honor and privilege to present you with this award for all the wonderful things you do in our community as well as the Tampa Bay area. Thank you very much. Um, we are proud to accept this reward award and to be recognized as um, part of the old smart community and we're happy to give back and we will continue to do so as long as we are in business. Thank you very much.
congratulations. That is well deserved. I'll tell you, you know, part of what makes a city more than a city is the businesses that we have here that get involved and makes us more of a community. And uh, your organization is definitely one of those that helps make this town a community. It's funny, I, I'll go to a lot of events, and there's Robin, there's Robin, there's Robin, there's Robin. And a little side piece of information here that our staff may not know this, but you know, here in the city now on Thursdays, we provide lunch for, for the staff. And this is something that came out of when Felicia, Al, and myself went and visited Microlumen and went around for the day, and we were so impressed with it. Uh, and the morale uh, is just a terrific place, but they provide meals for their staff on a regular basis. We, we, as a city government, we couldn't do it every day <laughs> like that. <laughs> But, but we did do it one day. But that's another bit of the influence that you have that you may not even realize. So congratulations. Well deserved. Awesome. Well deserved. <laughs> well deserved. At this time, the chair will entertain a motion to suspend the rules of the day for a special presentation by the mayor. So move. Second. Right. I have a motion and a second. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All aye. opposed. Motion passed. I turned it off. <laughs> Sorry. That's nice. You gave him a heads up. Testing, testing. I have a real honor tonight. Um, every community has certain people in it that make this unbelievable impact, right? And this city is no different. And so tonight we want to recognize someone here who has really been a rock in this community. Uh, he's not served on council, but he's been someone who has been an advisor to many of the people on this council. He's someone who have been an, has been an advisor to members of our chamber. And he's someone who's been an advisor to this nation. He has that kind of status with us. And he is special to the city of Oldsmar and the people who live here. And so tonight, I'd like to read this proclamation. In honor of Jerry Custon upon the occasion of his retirement. And no, he didn't know this was coming. Hmm. Whereas Jerry Custon has been a local leader who has made tremendous impact on the city of Oldsmar through a lifetime of public service. And whereas Jerry was made honorary citizen of Oldsmar in 2014 for his contributions in developing the Educational Foundation, Holiday Sharing Fund, Manufacturers Association, We Mean Business, the annual Mayor's Breakfast, and the widening of Racetrack Road, and Whereas, Jerry served as business assistance program specialist with the Upper Tampa Bay Regional Chamber of Commerce, and later served as president, CEO of the chamber, and developed the Florida Sun Coast Manufacturing Association, which serves Hernando, Hillsborough, Pasco, and Pinellas counties to enhance the regional workforce. And, whereas, Jerry could often be found singing the national anthem on stage of events such as Oldsmar Days and Nights, Oktoberfest and Freedom Fest, or reciting a poem about democracy at city council meetings, spreading his special style of patriotism. And whereas Jerry rose through the ranks of the United States Air Force, proudly serving our nation and demonstrating professional competency outstanding initiative, superb judgment, and the finest leadership qualities, retiring after 30 years with the rank of Colonel. He is a Colonel. We don't just call him Colonel. There's a reason. And whereas Jerry earned numerous awards for his service to our country, including the Defense 
Superior Service Medal, Distinguished Flying Cross, Defense Mater Materias Meritorious Service Medal, and whereas all of Jerry's City of Oldsmar friends and colleagues will miss his hard work, work, devotion to duty, and excellent leadership in helping to make Oldsmar an outstanding community. Now, therefore, I, Eric Seidel, Mayor of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, do hereby proclaim February 28th, 2020, as Jerry Custon Day within the City of Oldsmar. The City Council hereby recognizes and thanks Jerry Custon for his personal and professional dedication to the citizens of Oldsmar on the occasion of his retirement. Dated this 18th day of February, signed Mayor Eric Seidel. Jerry, would you please come up? Colonel? Do I get more than five minutes? <laughs> as much time as you'd like. <laughs> well, you got the fake news. <laughs> but uh, no, it's it's really been uh, really been an honor to do that. A couple of things I'd correct with Sandy is, uh, in addition to the stuff that he said about Robin and Mike Lumen, Robin is also a stalwart on our, uh, well, they're trustees of the chamber, and Robin has really shown some great leadership on our education foundation, taking over our STAR program this year. And uh, I think we awarded, what, 16000 no, $12,000. Yeah. yeah, we awarded $12,000 and 600, $600 grants uh, to do that. I'll tell you, I learned, uh, I learned a lot uh, with the city of Oldsmar. I think uh, I kid around about it. I'm not going to tell the whole story, but you know it. That uh, I really, I might have served democracy for 30 years, but I didn't know what it was until I came here. And when you see that with the Citizens Open Forum and the council members responding directly to the citizens eyeball to eyeball, that's where the accountability is. And I think that's where the true democracy still exists within our country. Because the further you get, the more complex the issues get, whether it's the county level, the state level, or the federal level, and things get a little bit convoluted, but it doesn't here. It's pure. And I really appreciate uh, not only the honorary citizenship, but being on the wall of honor of your veterans uh, committee. It means a lot to me. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. And you know, <clears throat> it's not missed on me and I think anybody else in this room. Here's a guy who has done honestly too many things to even be able to read out, mm -hmm. influenced too many people to even begin to, to name the list. And what's the first thing he does when he gets up there, when we just proclaimed his retirement day, uh, Jerry Custon Day in the city, what's the first thing he does? Talks about accomplishments of someone else. Yep. That's the kind of man you are, sir, Every and time. the example. Thank you. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it's good to be mayor. <laughs> to return to the rules Here, we'll of the day. Here we'll entertain a motion to return to the rules of the day. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Next item on the agenda, Community Redevelopment Agency. Item number two, a scheduled work session for Oldsmar Town Center. Did we uh, have any consensus on a date, uh, City Manager? Uh, Council Member Siraki was good on all dates. Um, Vice Mayor was only good for the fourth and only the remember. fourth out of all those dates? I'm on a Disney cruise. <clears throat> Do you want to go in my place? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Thank you, though. That's very kind of you, Council <laughs> Vice Mayor. <clears throat> Workshop. And Council Member Norris 
can't do the 16th, so the 4th was looking like the only one that I hadn't heard any objections to. The 4th it is. Is that good with everyone? Yes. Yep. All right. So the 4th of March uh, from 4 to 6. Very good. Moving on. Next item on the agenda is a consent docket, which will be announced by our city clerk, Ann Nixon. Item number three, approve payment to legal counsel for January 2020 legal services. Item number four, accept resignation of Bob Little from the Code Enforcement Board. And item number five, accept resignation of Carmen Blatt from the Leisure Services Advisory Board. Is there anybody who wishes to pull anything? Mayor, I'd like to pull item four and five. Item four and five, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve item number three. So move. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes. Items four or five, would you like to speak to both at the I same just time? wanted to thank Bob Little and Carmen Blatt for their services on our volunteer boards. It, they both had been on those boards for forever, and of course they're not here tonight, but I want right. to make sure that they're recognized for their service, long Absolutely. service for those two boards. I Absolutely. second that. Yeah. I, I third that. <laughs> third that. Well, Is that they yeah, certainly have spent a lot of time uh, giving to the city, and I know that they've been solid board members and uh, certainly spent a lot of hours helping build the city. So their, uh, uh, their departure Decades. is not uh, with sweet sorrow, but uh, it's with great gratitude from their city. So, yeah. all right, the chair will entertain a motion to uh, accept, uh, approve item four and five. Reluctantly motion. Do I hear a second? Reluctantly, se reluctantly second. Is there any discussion? Is I there actually a wrote, I actually drew frowny faces on these. There you go. Outstanding. Is that is that discussion? It, that's my member? discussion because it made me so okay. sad. <laughs> all right. Is there any uh, reluctance? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Motion passes. Item. <clears throat> excuse me. Excuse me. <clears throat> City of Oldsmar. Item six. Approve appointment of Carrie <clears throat> as regular member of the Veterans Advisory Board. Sir, would you please come up? Introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. <clears throat> My name is Carrie Blett, and I am a resident of Oldsmar. It's been since 2016. I uh, am active in Veterans Affairs, being a Vietnam veteran. Uh, I am a, in a DAV and a VFW. Most of my activity is in the VFW, where I'm the chaplain of our local Oldsmar post. I'm also the district chaplain for District 21. Uh, I am active in my community. I actually have a Bible study one, once a week in my Galair village, where I'm open to all residents. Let's see, I, I'm also a chaplain of the Billy Graham Rapid Response Team where I respond to hurricanes, fires, floods, and tornadoes uh, when necessary. Outstanding. So, thank you, and I welcome the opportunity to serve uh, my veteran, fellow veterans, and uh, community of Oldsmar. Well, we appreciate you stepping up to the challenge and being here. Uh, does anybody have any questions, any comments? I would like to say I am so thrilled. Um, because with all the work that Commander Bear, Gene, that, we, that everyone has done to get the VFW here and then you being the chaplain. And then I believe your wife is going to be the chaplain of our auxiliary. Not 100% I believe so. Sure. Well, we both Does she know this yet? <laughs> <laughs> she does now. She does not, now. It's, it's not set yet because we still have to figure all of that out. But well, we, we were both chaplains in uh, Dunedin. She was the auxiliary and I was the, the uh, VFW chapter chaplain. However, when we heard that Halls Farm was going to have its own VFW, we said, well, <coughs> charity begins at home. There it's you go. We like that. So we transferred Love Dunedin, but yeah. we really love Oldsmar. Yeah. I mean, well yeah. said. We're blessed. We're blessed to have you. Yeah, Thank you. There you go. Anybody else? Just want to say welcome. Thank you for your, for your service. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for volunteering. Yep. Thank you, Sandy. All right. Well, uh, Carrie, I did tell you about the singing or the dancing, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think you elected to do neither at this time. Is at that correct? At this time. Okay. Well, then we'll uh, we'll wait to the go. future. When you get reappointed, you'll be singing and dancing like crazy. Okay. All right. Motion All right. This, at this time, the chair will entertain a motion to approve. So 
I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying carry. 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 All opposed, motion passes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is our city attorney, item number seven. Item number seven, a public hearing of the second reading and adoption of ordinance 2002-01. Ordinance 2002-01, an ordinance of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, amending Section 6 of Appendix A, Architectural Design Pattern Book of the Town Center Development Code to add architectural style guidelines for contemporary and or eclectic architectural styles to amend Section 7 of Appendix A, Architectural and Design Pattern Book of the Town Center Development Code to require that architecture must incorporate a minimum of three primary characteristics and providing an effective date. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this item? Sensing none, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing. The chair will entertain a motion to approve. So move. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? I have one question, and I don't know if it's for Al or for Mr. Perez. Yes. Um, the, we, I love the updates that your office sends us on what's happening in Tallahassee. Yes. And I'm questioning whether or not Senate Bill 954 is going to make some of this sure. um, obsolete. Here, let me pull or that not one up obsolete, real quick. but if it's going to preempt or. Let's see. Let me go to 954. Yeah, it says it's going to preempt local governments from adopting zoning and developing regulations, but it's for single and du single family homes and duplexes. So we have that, right, Mayor, in the CRA? We do, but the, here's the thing that I would say, just as a point of reference, the fact that it's not passed. Right. Right. Like last year, I think, what was it? There were 700 bills proposed right. with like a, less than 100 passing. I'm worrying yes. for nothing. Precisely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. I mean, potentially. But I was curious because yeah. I, I was like, well, if we pass this and then Senate Bill 954 goes through, then we got to redo this again. Well, we'll have to redo a lot of things. Oh, we will. Yeah. We'll yeah I mean, it certainly would impact us in a lot of different areas, but... You know, it's funny, I was in Tallahassee uh, yeah, two weeks ago or a week ago, I don't remember when it was, but um, I was kind of fired up about a particular bill, and then the Senate jumped in there and kind of fixed the bill, and it, it never fails. The one thing that I have come to appreciate about Tallahassee is while the Florida League of Cities, you know, is our watchdog for us on certainly a lot of uh, uh, preemption type of uh, legislation that's proposed, almost none of it gets there. And so it's kind of like, I'll find out from our people up there, uh, does this have legs? And almost always, like at least in the 90% range, it doesn't, so I don't get worried about it. Okay. I was but only in any minute, it's a good question. Right. I was only worried because it passed 22 to nothing in the committee, so I'm yeah. like, oh my gosh, they really want this. Thank it did in the Senate, though. Um, at, there's been zero movement of the bill, and um, usually that's a good sign if you don't want a bill to get passed. Okay, good. Thank you. I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Councilmember Norris? Yes. Councilmember Seraki? Yes. Councilmember Grimes? Yes. Vice Mayor Gannon? Yes. Mayor Seidel? Yes. <clears throat> Ordinance 2020-01, amending the architectural and design pattern book of the Town Center Code and providing for an effective date is adopted with five votes for and zero against. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, City Manager, item number eight. Thank you, Mayor. Item eight is adopt resolution 2020-03, revising the budget for fiscal year 1920. I'd like to read the resolution by title only. Resolution 2020-03, resolution of the City Council of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, revising the budget for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2019 and ending September 30, 2020, authorizing the city manager <coughs> and the director of administrative services <coughs> to revise the existing budget. Specifically, uh, additional appropriations are being requested for the special election to be held for city council seat three. Uh, legal counsel budget needs additional appropriations to cover litigation support for the BMX facility. Planning and Redevelopment Department is requesting additional dollars to conduct a comprehensive review of the city's building permit related fee structure, which has been not updated in many years. Uh, Leisure Services is requesting funds to fund the purchase of a remote control slope mower, which was an innovation team um, initiative, one we're very proud of. And Administrative Services requesting additional funding for personal services to upgrade one position from a part-time to a full-time. 
Um, the adjustments be funded using utilizing $135,000 of the fiscal year 1920 general fund contingency reserve, and staff recommends approval. All right, the chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? You know, a lot of these items that you hear us go through relatively quickly, uh, it's because uh, we've had a lot of discussion with staff about the items that are being proposed, uh, not amongst each other, but uh, directly with them. And so I don't want the public to ever think that these things aren't, you know, vetted pretty well. And I, I thought with the slope mower, we could just take one of the old mowers and put really big tires on the back. Mm, not so much. So it would be like, <laughs> but that's what they said to me. And they said no. All right, since you're ready to vote, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes item number nine. Thank you, Mayor. Item 9 is authorized the city manager to advertise 2020-006 RFQ for professional services for the Oldsmar Town Center planning, design, and construction engineering. In accordance with the city council's directive for the Oldsmar Town Center properties, permission is requested for the city manager to solicit site plan design services to develop engineering plans consistent with the conceptual plan approved at the 2-4 February 4th 19, 2020, excuse me, City Council meeting. In accordance with Florida statutes and related requirements for design build procurement, the professional services procured via this RFQ will also assist with ongoing professional services during the solicitation of design build phase of the garage component of this project, which is a companion item on this agenda to this item, which is known as AIR-0961. Current unencumbered appropriations in the CRA fund will be utilized to initially fund the project and replenishment of said funds will be requested at a future budget revision. Staff recommends approval. Chair will entertain a motion to approve. So to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion. Let's find out. Building the vibe. Building the vibe. All in favor <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Motion passes. Thank you, Mayor. Item 10 is that companion item I just mentioned before, which is authorized the city manager to advertise 2020-007. RFQ for design build services for a parking garage in Oldsmar Town Center. In accordance with City Council's direction that I mentioned previously, permission is requested for the City Manager to solicit design build services developing a parking garage for the Town Center consistent with the conceptual plan approved at the February 4th, 2020 City Council meeting. Professional <laughs> services procured via this RFQ will be in accordance with Florida statutes and related requirements for design build procurement. This is a companion item to the one I previously mentioned, which is identified as AIR-0959. The budgetary impact of this procurement will be addressed in the fiscal year 2021 capital improvement budget, and staff recommends approval. Chair will uh, entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Mayor, I just want to say one thing. Awesome. Thank you for all your hard work and your dream to have this come to life. I just want to say thank you. Well, you're quite welcome. I will, uh, I, I'll make a comment on it and just thank the council and the staff who's worked unbelievably hard to get us to this point. Uh, certainly, we still have a lot of decisions in front of us, mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's amazing that with, in less than a year's time, the progress that's been made. And uh, that only happens with a committed staff and with a committed team who is uh, uh, capable of really keeping their eye on the end game and uh, working as a team. So uh, uh, great work. Mm -hmm. All right, sensing you're ready to vote, all in favor signify by saying building the vibe. Building the vibe. All opposed, please leave. No, all opposed. <laughs> Motion passes. Next item on the agenda, item 11. Thank you, Mayor. Item 11 is request council approval for the special event application fee waiver request for the Oldsmar Rod Run Car Show to be held on Saturday, March 20, excuse me, March 14th, year 2020. On Saturday, March 14th, Oldsmar Cares Incorporated will host the Oldsmar Rod Run Car Show at Ari Olds Park. The event will include classic, exotic, and performance automobiles, as well as musical entertainment and food vendors. The organization provides many support programs to those in need throughout this community and is able to do so by hosting fundraising events such as this. The item requests a waiver of fees in the amount of $700. In accordance with the City of Oldsmar's special event guide, the above organization is requesting that the city waive those fees associated with the event. 
All other external costs, including utility fees and staff charges of $240, will be the responsibility of the event organizer as outlined within the application. It is anticipated that the event will bring close to 600 participants and spectators to Oldsmar. A copy of the application was in the packet for your review. Staff recommends approval. Thank you. Chair, entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? None. I, all. I actually have. Council a Member North. <laughs> Um, it says on page 81 of 117 that the funds, how, how the funds raise the utilized donation to Oldsmar Cares. So is this like a fundraiser? Like how are they going to raise money? I'm sure it's by entry fees. Entry fees? Yeah, so and I don't know if there's stuff that they're selling as well. This Council member, uh, Gannon. On page 81, it indicates that there is no admission fee and no alcohol, but there will be vendors there. Not I sure. meant admission fees for entry for fees. Entry, car, entry, entry yeah. fees. Enter your car. Yeah. yeah. I don't think, um, I don't believe anybody from the organization is here. Uh, I did a little reading on it this morning. I believe the donation is in, in the form of uh, non-perishable food items. Oh. I saw oh. that in one of the prior events they've had. So I think the contribution is really literal in the sense that it's providing food that Osmar Cares will then use to help their cause in the community. Very good. Okay, so I just wanted to, uh, I just want, I, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with this, um, but I just wanted to point out that it's on the same day as an event that Felicia has been working on for a year, a $500,000 art exhibit that is very prestigious and and it was kind of a last minute request. So I'm hoping that in the future, we can maybe look at that a little bit more. Now, I'm not saying that car people don't like art and art people don't like cars. I'm not saying that. And there could be an argument for people will go to both. You know, But I think that we need to have more lead time so that we don't have a conflict on something. I mean, Felicia's been working hard on this with Creative Pinellas. And so I think we need to take a look at that and then also maybe take a look at are we I'm you know I ask for for vet, I ask for fee waivers for veterans events so I'm one of them but I don't want us to get into the same situation that Safety Harbor got in where they were approving everything and they weren't charging for anything and so I think maybe at a, at a budget session or something maybe we should look at that fair enough fair yeah. enough I, I heard everybody knows same. I'm an advocate at Oldsmar Cares they get my salary so yeah I, I, <laughs> I advocate the same thing as it relates to carte blanche I will say this there are a few different organizations that I will always kind of venture to say carte blanche in part because Oldsmar Cares being one of them because they do what we can't do as a city right they're kind of our stopgap you know, because we're not as a, as a city set up to do some of those things that we have nowhere to send someone who's in trouble, we can send them to Oldsmar Cares. And right. I've always felt strongly about that. But your point's well taken. Council Member Thank Siraki. One more thank, thing, one more thing. Wait, wait, Council Member Siraki, Thank I'll you, come Mayor. Back to you. I just want to mention that this event was used to be held in Tarpon Springs at the, I believe, uh, his house. Mm -hmm. He has a huge right. property. I actually took one of my Volkswagens there one year, and there were a lot of people there. I mean, it was actually a lot of, of different antique cars. It was actually a very nice show. Okay. So I think it's going to be nice to bring those people into our city, you know, for that event. Very good. Is there a chance Council that they could ch change the date so it doesn't conflict with Felicia? But what has been going it's on? It's called is? Spacecraft. Spa I'm sorry. Space Launch. Space Launch. Oh, my God. How did I get that wrong? Spacecraft. <laughs> Spacecraft. Council Member North, I'll come back to you when it's your turn to, you to, to go get up. <clears throat> I'm just curious. I mean, if they're just coming to us now, is there any chance they could consider a different date? Uh, so they wouldn't come they've actually it? considered multiple dates because it's been on my schedule three or four times now. So um, not the hot rod, but the space launch. I mean, they're, they're out of this world. I couldn't resist that. It's corny. Wow. But, uh, wow, that was <laughs> failed miserably. Wow. Oh, don't give up your day job. Huh? Okay, all right. <laughs> but uh, they they actually have had multiple dates on this already. Okay. I'm just, I'm just Council Member Gannon. I actually have no comments. I, I think it's okay if we have a lot of people coming to Oldsmar on the same day at the same time. And I stand corrected, Vice Mayor. Thank you. <laughs>
Councilmember Norris. I just wanted to shout out to everybody at Oldsmark Cares. I'm not against anything that has to do with Oldsmark Cares. So I don't want anybody to think that I raised any concerns because of that. No, upset? I think your points were all taken, huh? though. Am I upset? No, I'm not upset. Okay. I just want to be clear. That's all. Yeah. And, and was the question to, to change the date to Councilmember um, Grimes, to change the date of the space art exhibit no, no, or no. the date of the car show? The car show. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. I thought so you asked about this. Uh, yeah, that's what he threw me. No, yeah, I was no, saying I was... because they're just coming now for permission. I was just wondering if they could push it back. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's something that be considered, but what I'm going to suggest is that we vote on what's in front of us tonight because they're probably moving forward with at this point, but it's a good point. I would also say this. I'm not so certain that we're not capable of managing multiple events. I think we do it actually quite often, and I think we'll probably see more and more of that, and quite honestly. And so hopefully they'll complement one another. Uh, is there any other discussion? Sensing none, sensing you're ready. Council Member Gannon. The Women's Club of Ultimar is having their um, garage sale, actually, on that same day, because <laughs> lots of people will already be here. There you go. Oh my That's a good Something point. That's a popular day. That's a popular day. No all right, any other discussion? Sensing you're ready to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes to item number 12. Secondary item 12 is request council approval to waive bid requirements and authorize purchase and installation of pumping equipment for the Gimgong lift station by Mater Electric Motors per the Lee County contract number B-160144 KC on piggyback form 17-011. Utility Maintenance Division of Public Works maintains the city's 27 lift stations in the sewer collection system. They also repair and conduct upgrades depending on system needs as part of the annual uh, lift station rehabilitation program. This year, work is planned for the Gimgong lift station. This station receives sewage from the Cypress Lakes Industrial Park, and as a result, the equipment is showing extensive wear and corrosion. The project will include replacement and installation of the pumps, bases, brackets, and associated appurtenances. The pumping equipment will be supplied with a protective coating to extend the life of the equipment due to the corrosive nature of the waste processed in this station. The work will be performed by Mater Electric Motors under the piggyback contract mentioned above. That contract was approved by council in November 5th, 2019 meeting. And the work is budgeted in the water and sewer fund under the lift station rehabilitation program with a not to exceed dollar amount of $50,000. Staff recommends approval. Thank you. The chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. I'll think, you think it's important for us to... To the people who live over there. <laughs> I'm thinking we not skimp on this one. Since you're ready to vote, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, motion passes. Item 13. Thank you, Mayor. Item 13 is request council approval to waive bid requirements and approve the purchase of a replacement John Deere tractor from Everglades Farm Equipment Incorporated per the pricing terms and conditions of the Florida Sheriff's Contract number FSA 19-VEH 17.0 on piggyback form 20-007A. The current tractor, which is in the fleet identified as number 687, was originally purchased in the year 2003 and has been in service for over 16 years. As it is aged, it has required more frequent servicing and repair work. It is on the current equipment replacement schedule that the city maintains for this fiscal year with a new John Deere tractor that will continue to service the Oldsmar Sports Complex and Parks Divisions. The total for this purchase is $41,150, and funding is available in the current year capital budget in the Oldsmar Sports Complex Division GL account. And staff recommends approval. Thank you. The chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Do I have a second? second? Any discussion? I want to see a picture of this thing. I promise I'll get you a picture, sir. <laughs> Can we write it? No, we, once no, you, we can't write once it. you sign it and try to spare. Into the bay. Can we push it into the bay? <laughs> not the bay, not Tampa Bay. Not Sensing Tampa bay. you're ready to vote, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. The motion passes. You guys are out of control here tonight. You started. Your fault. Yeah, you started. <laughs> I know it. I know it. Goodness gracious. Is that all you got, sir? I should say. Thank you, City Clerk. Oh, I don't have anything tonight. Excellent. Good report. Okay, next item on City Council. She, she's always good. She's right to the point. She's right to the point. All right, City Council, item number 14, cancel July 7th City Council meeting. I believe it was uh, Council Member Siraki who added this to the agenda, so I will 
uh, allow him to uh, <coughs> open comment on. Thank you, Mayor. I wanted to uh, bring this up because I feel that that particular week when we're, uh, for the 4th of July, we're celebrating the uh, celebration of our America's birthday, uh, it's good for the city of Oldsmar employees to be able to plan vacations during that week and have that time off. And I would suggest that if there is a problem or a situation where Al or the city staff feels that we need to have a longer meeting for the 2nd July meeting, that let's stay longer. I don't mind staying until 10 o'clock or 1030 uh, and just have a long meeting in the July for the next meeting after. And I hope that everyone would uh, support me on this. But uh, it's important that the city employees and plus we can plan vacations with our families. All right. I'm, I'm going to do this for the purpose of discussion. I'm going to uh, entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve. To approve. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Discussion. All right. I'll come back. Vice Mayor. So last year, there was a similar motion to cancel the July 4th week meeting, and there was a special circumstance which caused uh, the potential to cause um, former council member Gabby McGee to miss both meetings in the month of July. Uh, and because of that special circumstance, I voted against canceling that 4th of July week meeting. This year, I obviously don't foresee any sort of circumstance and there's sufficient time for city staff to potentially plan and accordingly to accommodate the one uh, fewer meeting. Uh, so I don't have any So you speak in it. favor of the motion? I do. Council Member Norris. My stance has not changed from last year. Sorry, Dan. Sorry. <laughs> um, I just have to vote my conscience and I believe that the the 4th of July is on a Friday, and the 7th is the following Tuesday, so that's a long weekend anyway, and we already canceled the December, the last one in December, so we already go down from 24 meetings to 23 meetings, and this is what we're elected to do. I mean, it, it's only 23 meetings a year, so I get your point about vacations and everything else, but there's there's special provisions for if any of, if any of us want to take a council meeting off. As long as we don't take too many, we get an excused absence. You know, I think the employees can also you know do their vacation time around that. So I am sorry, Dan, but I'm, I'm, I have the same feelings as last year. I speak against. The I speak against. The okay, Councilmember Grimes. Oh, still love me. He still loves me. Councilmember Grimes. <laughs> well, um, this does, would not impact me. Because I will not be on council. But you're on council now. You but I am opinion. now. Um, I really, I, I tend to see no reason that it. I'm in favor of it. Very good. I'm, I'm going to give my two cents. I'm in favor of the motion. I'll tell you why. Well, I don't disagree with Council Member Norris. To me, it's not the number of meetings that we have on the books. I really view it as the number of meetings we actually need. Um, and sometimes I feel like. Like, I'll give you an example. Tonight, we'll be done in probably less than an hour, right? Now, in the meantime, the amount of staff and energy that goes into this meeting, and, and there were items on the agenda that were time sensitive, no question about it. But we have quite a few meetings that are suspect to me. Uh, and I, I tend to look at it and say, you know, uh, I respect people's time. We have a group of directors who are over here who are at every meeting. Uh, they're, they're committed to the cause, uh, and also even the time that it takes uh, our citizens in watching and keeping up with what official business is conducted. And I will also say this, uh, I, I was a supporter of this last year to cancel that meeting, even though there was a circumstances as it related to Council uh, Member McGee, uh, who I have immense respect for, uh, who was vice mayor at the time. Uh, but. <clears throat> I do remember the meeting, and the meeting was about a 45-minute meeting, and there wasn't much on the agenda. You know what I mean? And so, once again, it was one of those things that uh, was it a necessary meeting just because it's on the calendar. And I, I believe there are a couple times during the year when the, you know, it, it, it doesn't necessarily make uh, sense to meet uh, because we just don't have that much. And certainly with council providing plenty of uh, notice to staff, uh, they'll plan accordingly. You know, it's just like when we made the change to really try to reduce uh, uh, tentative agenda items being uh, not part 
of our agenda tightened up, and, and you know, it's, it's, it's worked great. Uh, so in any event, uh, that's my two cents for what it's worth, but I certainly respect everyone. So we uh, have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Sensing you're ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay. Okay, motion passes. Uh, I voted in favor for the record. All right, next item on agenda, item 15, tentative agenda for March 3rd, 2020. So anybody who wishes to pull anything from the tentative agenda? <coughs> Sensing there's not, is there anybody who wishes to add anything to the tentative agenda? City clerk, you got anything for me? Not this time. Not this time. You're on the ball. That's why. <laughs> All right. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the tentative agenda for March 3rd, 2020. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, motion passes. Next item on the agenda, council comments. I'm going to start with my vice mayor tonight. So a couple things. Um, I immensely enjoyed the opening day ceremonies for Oldsmar Little League. Obviously, that was my first time being there, and what a fantastic event. And my kids had a great time, too. So I just wanted to encourage them to keep up all of their hard work. I know Little League works really hard to keep their numbers up, to keep their facility you know, going for all their players. And I wish them a wonderful season. Um, looking forward to this weekend's Touch a Truck event. That's a big deal. That's a big deal for families. I don't know if anybody's been to the one in Tarpon Springs. It's huge. And it brings a lot of people to the city. And it kind of helps city staff brag a little bit. You know, We've got some incredible equipment. People, you know, our, our residents need to see all of the equipment and capabilities that we have. It's really exciting. And my kids will love it. We will be literally the first ones in the door. Um, <laughs> certainly looking forward to the Old Mark Harris Wine and Food Gala on Thursday night. Always a fantastic event. I know a lot of the people who are here tonight will be there. Um, and then just um, one last thing. I actually emailed the uh, article to Al, and maybe he can circulate it to everybody. But... Last week, the Pasco County Commission approved a special um, TIF district, a tax in lieu of financing loan, for the development of a downtown for Wesley Chapel. So uh, a quick summary, they went with a master developer. Uh, the whole development will cost around $736 million. It will include about 2,700 residences and 355 thousand square feet of commercial and office space including four class a buildings the city give i'm sorry the county gives in return about 33 million over the course of 30 years in tax rebates of course which is about 60 16 percent of tax payments to the county over that same period of time so and they also did a 1.25 million dollar loan to kind of like get it going through penny for pasco um, 10-year build-out, um, kind of an interesting timeline, really compressed. And the biggest thing that just wow, gobsmacked me, it's expected to create a 1,000, more than a 1,000 full-time jobs and add almost $40 million to local revenue every year. So I know that's kind of bigger than what we're thinking, and obviously we've kind of... Uh, gone a different direction than the master developer, but I really encourage you to read the article. It's um, it's called Avalon Park of Wesley Chapel is what they're naming it. So really interesting. Excellent. Thanks, Excellent. Council Councilmember Norris. I would also like to say that the Oldsmar Little League opening was awesome. I'm going to use your word, Dan, awesome. And yes, it was a strike, Mayor, and what it was a strike. I've been like trying to not watch the news and not do Facebook and everything, but if somebody tags me in something and the mayor tagged me in, in the post for Oldsmar Little League because all five of us were there. And you're, I don't remember a time where all five council members attended. Yeah, and remember. it was it was special, it was. Um, and um, the uh, thank you for the veggie burger at the Historical Society picnic. He was true to his word, so I appreciate that. And another thing that I attended, um, I was a judge for the Aladdin auditions at the Opal Theater. And I am here to tell y'all that I heard it said yesterday that Suda has caught lightning in a bottle. And I truly believe it because the kids, there were, there were 19 altogether, a couple of them 
kind of stepped out. So there were 17 that we were watching. Suda taught 17 kids from the age of, I don't know, six to maybe, they were, they were young to maybe preteens. Within five, seven minutes, she taught them an entire dance routine, singing dance routine. I was amazed. It was, it was, it was so much fun. Um, I'm not sure who won the roles or anything, but um, I, I really enjoyed it. And I'm glad that the whole council and the, you, Mayor, everybody is becoming more willing to, you know, help her in this endeavor. So make sure that you go. I don't know when the date of Aladdin, I think it's in April somewhere, will remind you, but it was really cool. And then the only other thing I have is I am honored to say I was appointed to a board that's really important to me. Um, I'm on the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council because um, Dan got promoted and is the president yes. and yeah. all that good stuff now. <laughs> um, so I got to take his place on it. And they have a co-committee, not a co-committee, a subcommittee of that, and it's the um, Tampa Bay Resilience Coalition. Mm -hmm. And it's on the, we went to the summit, it's on the, you know, tales of the summit. And I'm really proud to be on that committee, and I'm going to be on the planning committee for the next summit for, we're looking at 18 months. So, and that's, oh, my team, my old, my little league team at Providence Painting is, go Pirates! That's all I got to say. There you go. <laughs> There you go. A little home shot there. Yep, shout out Council to Member Pirate. Siraki. Oh, thank you, Mayor. I just have a couple things. I wanted to thank Linda and yourself for coming to the Historical Society picnic. I was the chef, and uh, Eric, Eric, what'd you have? Three hamburgers? I was hungry, man. Oh, you were hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, I'm looking forward to Chip Pot's Sunset Series, and I've been praying no rain. Because I, I went to the first one we had, and it was a, that was a, a lot of fun. And then the last thing I have is I started going to the Little League in 2009. And I just want to say that uh, Linda's right. This is the first time that we council was there. Uh, one year, it was just me and Jerry Beaverlin, And one year, it was just Mayor Doug Beavis and I. But I want to do say, say this. This was the largest I've seen. Mm -hmm. the most teams and the most kids at the event. So I just wanted to share that with everyone. I think our little league is taking off, and it's a sign that our city has a lot of new young families coming into it, and our community is starting to grow, and that's kind of exciting thing to actually witness mm -hmm. and see uh, as a council member, and I wanted to share that with you. And that's all I have, Mayor. Very Thank good. you. Thank you, sir. Council Member Grimes. Um, I had the pleasure of Saturday um, evening going to the first responders dinner with the mayor and Dan, um, and it was just, and of course, some of our, our fellow, chief. our chief and some fellow firefighters. It was, um, it was just amazing how, you know, selfless these people are and how they put themselves in harm's way every day to keep us safe. And it was just, it was, it was just heartwarming. And it was just an honor to be there representing Old Smar. So nice. Is that all you got? That's all I got. All right. I know you're winding up for the that last pitch coming soon, huh? <laughs> we <laughs> next got the month. special elections coming up. I'll start there. Yeah. Don't forget, get out and vote. I know the ballots are coming out. I am going to make a comment on the charter item that's on there. I'd ask you to consider voting in favor of it. It's uh, it's a uh, what I call a housekeeping item. For cleanup, some people have asked me. wasn't really sure what it is. Uh, there was a, a clerical er, clerical error made when they went to codify that in the past, uh, and they deleted a section. And you know, your mayor probably didn't feel it really needed to be voted on because we never voted it out. But I'm not legal counsel, so that really didn't matter what the mayor thought. <laughs> so that's why everybody's got it on the ballot, and we're going to do it the right way and vote it in. So I'd ask you to consider that and make a point of uh, sharing with your neighbors if you don't mind. And we're happy, any of us, to answer any questions on that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Little League, I'll just comment on that real quick since everybody spoke about it. 40 additional players than they've had wow. last year. So look, Little League across the country has had some really hard times. It's uh, in, in being impacted by travel ball and some other competitive uh, elements that are really hurting Little League on a national level. That goes against the trend. And so to all the volunteers and the coaches 
and their board of directors and everybody uh, kudos because that really makes one heck of a statement. And, and as your mayor, I was certainly proud to see the whole team out there. I've been out there the last couple of years and uh, it was just nice to have everybody out there when people are working so hard so they know that the, the city supports them and, and our city photographer was out there and Felicia was out there. Al was out of town, so he couldn't be there. Otherwise, I, I know he would have been. Uh, and, and our staff, who works very hard to get the fields ready mm -hmm. and get the, the, everything all set, ready to go for Little League, uh, their hard work is not underappreciated or go unnoticed. So please share that with our staff. Oldsmar Cares Gala, it's a big gala. And from what I understand, if you don't have tickets, you're probably not going to get in. But I would bet if you showed up at the door with cash in your hand, they might let you in. <laughs> but the mayor didn't say that. But uh, it'll be a successful event and raise a lot of money for a great cause. They do terrific work. And I'm going to plug, <clears throat> again, the Sunset Sounds coming up the week, uh, a week from now. It's a week from now, right? February 28th? A week from Friday. Thank you. Uh, but if you, if you haven't made it out, and we've had some weather issues, but that's okay. You know, the park's not going away. Right. If you haven't made it out to it, I have to tell you, it's got the best vibe. It's one of those things. It's like, you know, we have some really good events at Ariel's parks. I mean, they're, you know, barn burners. This is a little more in the chill zone. Kind of pull up. They even have special golf cart parking. You can roll on up. It's very casual. We have the food trucks out there. It's come out and support them. Uh, but it's nice you know, comfortable. It's not the, the hurry, hurry kind of thing uh, with some of our other events. And so I would encourage you to come out and support this. I know that they worked real hard on it. They've been disappointed a little bit with the weather, not always cooperating. But nevertheless, I wanted to give it a plug. And that's all I have. The chair will entertain a motion to Council Member Norris. <laughs> I just think that because it's old Smars, Jerry Custon Day, I'd love to end this meeting with all of us once again saying thank you for everything you've done for our city, our county, our country. Very good. I would agree. Well deserved. Well deserved. And yes, you have your motion. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion doesn't require a vote. We are adjourned. Thank you.